What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of SUP FM. Uh, this is episode 156. I am one of your hosts, Lawrence Deloach. I am joined, as always, by my guys, Chris Cheney. What up, what up, what up? And Luke Trovisi. Hey, what's up, boys? How we doing? <laughs> Chilling, man. Really excited this week. We got a wonderful episode on the horizon. We're going to get into a lot of things, as usual. Air Max Day, Warren Lotus, Sneakers, scandal and we got a special guest in the building uh we're gonna get into a, a wonderful interview with uh, our guy fresco wilson fresco bk uh, we're gonna talk about a lot of good things in this interview so you definitely want to listen to that uh where can they find us at guys you find the podcast at sub podcast nyc on all social media platforms chris where they, uh you can find me at trevisus on all social media platforms where can they find you chris you can find me on all social platforms as not that Cheney, C H E N E Y. And Lawrence, I believe you have some handles you could throw out too. Sure. It's uh, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter at LZD three, two, five. And yeah. You know, and I you have a, a new podcast. podcast, don't you? Yeah. It's called, I hate this job. And you can follow that at, I hate this uh, job pod. And we talk shit about uh, some of the worst jobs that uh, people have had. So just listen to that. Get in that it's, Discord, too. Oh, yeah, the Discord. Definitely get into the Discord. You know, we got a phone number. Uh, you, we got an email that's all linked onto Instagram, so go that. It's also available on the Discord, so that's like our fan hub, so go there and hang out. Um, but, man, we had quite a week. Yeah, quite a week. Fresco was a great guest, first off. Definitely yeah. a lot of fun. A lot of fun to listen to. Uh, yeah, what, what it was, it was like five L's in like three days, was it? Yeah, it felt like yeah. it felt like a lot of losses this week, man, on that on that app that no one really likes, you know? Yeah. The maybe most used just, but hated app. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should stop saying its name. Like, that's how we silently protest it. We just, just call like, it the app. The app that must not be named. Yeah, we, we ain't talking about that app no more. No more. Fuck mm -hmm. that app. <laughs> yeah, we've also got some crazy Travis Scott fragment news, which is exciting. It's it's so funny, too, because I feel like we're always like like a week or three weeks early. There's a time frame where we're always talking about stuff like a little too early. And it makes me think like, you know, someone's listening to this podcast. I'm telling you, man, somebody's <laughs> listening to this podcast and they don't like us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is crazy, though. We have that whole Travis conversation in the next, you know, within like a couple of days. It's like confirmed and like there's official not official images, but the, there's the unofficial official images. You closest know what I mean? look we've ever seen so far. Yeah, that's always mm -hmm. the title, right? The unofficial official is the closest look we've had yet of mm -hmm. this shoe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, so what are your what are your first thoughts of this? Uh, this Travis Scott, Hiroshi, Jordan one fragment that we've seen on the Internet. Um, you know what? I'm going to follow up a little bit. I mean, we're going to definitely get into it later because um, we should get to Fresco as soon as possible. But I do think that it's it's sort of although the hype is the highest, it's devaluing both brands. Mm -hmm. Disagree. I like it. <laughs> true, true, true. Why? What do you think, Al? Uh, it's you know, it's it's, it's just just try and take the hype through the roof and you know that, that's about it we, we can get into it you know like i said a little bit later but yeah it's definitely uh it's a lot also digest. we haven't we haven't really been keeping our our eye on that uh on that warren lotus kid yeah i mean uh so there's a kid walking for a pair right yeah so warren lotus put on his instagram that uh somebody he was like hey people in like social media I'm looking for somebody to walk from San Francisco to L.A. in the in the Reaper shoes to to do like a quality test. And he's been <laughs> walking for like 10 days, which, you know, if you know, if you're from the comedy world, that very much reminds you of, you know, some some of these like crank like radio shows from back in the day where they're like, we're going to give one listener a pair of Reaper shoes if they can walk 10,000 miles in them. And it's ridiculous. But I can't wait to talk more about that later as well. You know, Fresco, um, uh, Lawrence and I had the pleasure of, um, you know, being on set with him, uh, you know, and through that interaction, uh, you know, I followed him on Instagram. I've seen him outside, you know, like being in the Lower East Side from the comedy shows and there's some stuff down there that he does. I've gotten to hang out with him a little bit and great guy, man. He's always on the educational tip and he's got some great stuff to say about some programs that he's created. Um, he's getting to more Shout in production social studies, social studies, social studies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's getting into producing. He's has this affiliation with 2K now. So I'm excited to get into it and let's get into it right now.
Hey, welcome up. Welcome back, everybody, uh, to the SUP FM. Uh, we've got Fresco Wilson with us. Fresco, how you doing? I am awesome. Um, I'm happy to be here. It's nice in Brooklyn. It's been nice the last few days, so life is good. Great. Oh, yeah, uh, buddy. For, first up, off, though. you know, you guys have a, you actually have kind of a history with uh, Chris and Lawrence. Uh, you know, I understand that. Yeah, I haven't met you before, but you're a great dude. So let's uh, let's jump into that. How did you guys meet? uh each other and what were your first impressions of chris and lawrence um i'm actually a horrible individual luke like i'm i'm sorry to burst this bubble but you know i'm like 60 40 60 being asshole no i'm joking I'm <laughs> <laughs> so when i met uh these two gentlemen <laughs> it's just like but you know what <laughs> i would say these guys they're they're welcoming but they also exude comedy so like you feel the sarcasm, you feel the the genuineness, you feel like a variety of different things paused when uh, <laughs> interacting with these two mm -hmm. gentlemen for the first time. So they were they were intrigued, they were excited, they, you know, it was just easy. Like it was just so organic to work with them. It, it didn't even take any thought, really. Thank you, man. Yeah, that, that wonderful is... words from Fresco to start this interview off. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but one thing, uh -oh. there was there was something that I have to uh, I have to, you know, oh, just correct God. you in the the uh, filming that we did while we were on set. You referenced the Jordan One as being designed by Tinker Hatfield. That's Who Chris. Did? Oh. Chris. Chris. Yes, or Chris. Chris. I, Chris. I, I knew it was what? Chris. Yep, I do remember that. Chris. It's, Peter Moore, sir. It is Peter, Peter Moore. Moore. Yes. Ah, well. Um, yes, but hmm. I just, you know, it's because I watched it after and we were just so in the moment of flowing that, you know, it, it happened. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. look, man, I'll take that. I mean, I knew that. And if I if I misspoke, I mean, that's me. And I'll, I'll take that. You know what I mean? It is what it is sometimes when you're on camera like that. That was like <laughs> our first real experience like that. So, you know, I'll flub. I'll take it. No. No, no, and that was it. That was the only because that's the thing that people came at me before when I posted the the yeah. video. Oh, they did. Like, yeah, yo. he said that, bro. You didn't just correct him. I'm like, yo, bro. One, I was probably walking on a cloud, and two, yeah, um, yes. No, no, <laughs> no. I feel it, and it's great. It's good for you to call me out too, because I got a couple people that pulled me to the side. You know, some people I respect and going like, hey, you can't just be speaking like that out here. And I was like, you know what, man, you are very, very correct. But this is on YouTube now forever, so I got to eat this one. <laughs> Fresco, so that, is, that is something I've learned with working with Chris that you will always <laughs> correct him and always want to put him in a headlock. And I will go on record. I've said it a billion times. I'm going to say it a billion and one times. Yes, I wanted to put Chris in a fucking headlock, <laughs> but I love him. I love him. He's a great guy, but he, he deserves to be in multiple headlocks. All right. So that's just going. Oh, from sidebar. There. Yo, I really will say that you actually got me to drink kombucha. Wow. Wow. Right. You are a kombucha fluencer. Wow. wow. <laughs> you know, I, I will say this, and, and that is one thing that I, I, I actually am really proud of, man. And there are people that, you know, probably will look at kombucha and be like, fuck, I'm not drinking that. And they message me and they're like, yo, Lawrence, what should I try? And then I do get some people actually to drink it. You don't have to be hooked on it, but it's it's pretty good for you, man. So good. I'm, it's I'm pretty happy good you for did. you. And then it doesn't taste bad. Like, it's not a bad thing. You know, there's several ones that have, you know, a decent taste. It's acquired, but it's decent. I like, see, this is this is what I'm, this is why we should have had, we should, look, we should have a fourth mic for real, Fred. You, yeah. are, <laughs> you are fucking Did you welcome. hear that? They were about to kick me out. Right I, was, I was, I was. I was about to say, we should have a get out of here. <laughs> He said Tinker Hatfield for Jordan ones and I get kicked out. I don't know. This is the dynamic no, was, of the show. It was solely, but even so, as I as I came at Chris, you know, I've my man Lawrence. Oh, no. <laughs> right. my eye. Let's, let's Lawrence go. apparently is an avid uh sneaker shopper. Am I mm -hmm. correct by saying this? Yeah. Um you are a VIP customer at a store in uh near columbus circle so uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah is that you yeah yeah i'm not gonna sit here and lie yeah yeah, um, yeah definitely yeah let's just say like you know let's just say i've i've heard you picked up some really amazing things <laughs> and yeah. you're a well-liked 
you're a well liked guy in those spaces. Apparently. What? <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I'm not not gonna lie. Like you know. It, <laughs> What I've realized in life, Fresco, and we don't have to get into details. It's a small <laughs> fucking world, brother. It is small. And yes. who you and who you meet and who you know, and then they know, and then you're like, oh my God, this is like it is really a small world. And that's all I will say. And it it, <laughs> it is put a it is put a smile on my face when I when I've heard and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. So yes, uh yes, I am yeah. I appreciate, yeah, that is fucking wow yeah Talk i would me. say that you know in regards to the world being so small i say uh everybody has a circle but your circle is really like a period because it's that small it's that small like the it world is. the globe is that small so it's like everything is just yo it's so connected it and is, man. when it comes to sneakers when it comes to radio when it comes to a lot of these things are like subliminally intertwined yep yeah. It is, man. So listen, speaking of, you know, stuff like, you know, everything being connected and, you know, everyone, this is a, a sneaker world. Is, it is very small. And Fresco, it's been a minute since, you know, at least the three of us have kicked in. Now you're on the podcast with us. And I just kind of want to know what what have you been up to, bro? Like what's going on in your world? Well, I am now uh, in production. I got into uh, directing and production. I produced a few pieces last year. Um, I also signed a contract with NBA 2K. Uh, I think this was like shortly after I met you guys. As a matter of fact, where, um, where am I? Oh, yeah, they're right here. So I've always got them like. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, um, I met a gentleman and uh we tried to get me into 2K, I believe it was 19, but um, I guess my cutoff time was too late and they were producing a new program that had a few people that they would bring in. And in 20, excuse me, in the middle of 2019 for 2020, I signed a contract with 2K. So I have my own character in the game. Oh, awesome. That's amazing, um, buddy. Good for you. Yes. And social studies, of course, of 2020, I had to, oh, social studies is a, progressive teaching program that teaches people about the cultural and business side of sneakers. Um, I teach it mainly in schools or I was teaching it in schools prior. So, you know, up until I want to say the end of 2019, I got to eight schools in New York city. That's great, man. I think that's awesome. And Luke is of school age. Cause Luke is kind of like an elementary <laughs> high school. So I'm sure Luke has some wonderful follow-up questions about yeah, I've got, I've got plenty of questions. Yeah, like, how did it get started? Like, no, seriously. <laughs> Come on, Lawrence, why are you? <laughs> I'm really sensitive about my baby face. You know that. <laughs> first, go ahead to leave. <laughs> go ahead to leave. I'm hurt. All right. We didn't discuss this. <laughs> first, yeah, why don't you tell us about social studies a little bit? You know, like, how, how did you get started with it? You know, what are you doing now with COVID? Sorry. <laughs> now I'm back. There good. we go. Get this right. Get this right. Yes. Yes. I'm back. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. okay. <clears throat> so, no, yeah. yeah. What, what'd you ask me? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I asked you, you know, how did you get it started? You know, uh, what have you been doing since COVID started? Like, how have you been kind of switching up the program? Um, well, there was no desire to have. Uh, I taught a few uh, virtual lessons, not many. Mm -hmm. um because like yo to even grab these kids attention during this time is like yo it's it's crazy you realize that for some children like school is an escape from what they have going on at home so like yeah being at home mm -hmm. and trying to remote learn and like yo like it, it, it was just a lot so um uh haven't been teaching much maybe like one day a week um, outside of that, I've been just focusing on production. I'm working on a new uh, content series based around food. Um, you guys will see that soon. Great. Man. Um, I have been, <laughs> I, <laughs> I've been on a healthy sneaker. Um, was it? Was it a healthy sneaker diet? Like, I would you say are you like purging a little, or like is like how would you describe like healthy? Chris. Yeah, cut the fat. Yeah, ah, I cut so you're, the fat. So the, there's a reason why you got only those shoes in the background, right? There's not any more. 
No, there's there's yeah, there's more, <laughs> but um, <laughs> there's definitely more. But these, um, I don't know. Like this is what I see. Like you know, like this is easiest to grab. So normally these are the ones that are getting worn, but the rotation changes. Got you. Yeah, Fresco. I, I did want to talk a little bit more about social studies because I think it's very important that you're doing something like this for for young for youth because. A lot of people look at sneakers as, all right, this is something I want to show off. I want to look really nice. But as you really start looking into it, there's a certain business aspect of it. And when you look at certain communities and how they, especially being a black man, you look at how they kind of act towards the inner city with kids, you know, with sneakers. I think it's it is important to teach them that, yeah, there is, you know, there's financial freedom. There are ways to kind of make this work and is that something you're proud of something you're doing with this or that is absolutely the purpose because uh the kids that are learning these for even the adults whoever decides to step into the realm and wants to learn about the business of of sneakers or footwear um the premise is to to teach them like self-worth and how important they are within this industry because without them they're the real influencers because they're the ones that are going out to actually spend the money. So it's like, yo, we put product on person. We put product on Travis Scott. We put product on this person, these people. If the audience doesn't buy into them, then they're not influential. Mm -hmm. So right. who's really like in the powerful space? It's the, the consumer in a sense, or these kids that are learning about the business. And it's an easy way to, one, it's relatable because mm -hmm. it's, it's sneakers. But then there's so many nuances and things that go into sneakers. There's design, there's marketing, there's branding, there's 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 influencer marketing. There's so many things that tie into this um, space of the business of sneakers. There's math, there's science, there's there's all yep. these things. So um, being that, you know, I can give them an introduction to this, into the business of knowing what they're purchasing, why they're purchasing and, you know, how they can benefit from it they can also see that this small thing can like broaden their horizons. And it's something that they just naturally love. You know, you brought up uh, Travis Scott Fresco. So last week we were actually kind of um, you being on the business side, I think you're a great person to ask because you get to see like when hype sort of builds up and dies down before anyone else. You know, I think you have a keen eye for that. So last week we were kind of talking about Travis, him probably being like the number one sort of influencer as far as footwear at the moment, at least to kids. Um, mm -hmm. I was kind of saying that, like, although his hype value stock is very high, he sort of needs like a third party now to sort of keep it that high. You know what I mean? Like he's come off of amazing collaborations like with McDonald's, then going back to sneakers with like PlayStation. And now he's got these fragments rumored to come out. Like so when you talk about the business side with these kids, like, is that part of it? Like where this hype train is and what hype is and like sort of can you break that down to the kids? Like, how does that sort of work? Well, you have to like when you talk about like hype and that like sneaker influencer hype, it, you know, goes back to like Run DMC, who are like the original My sneaker Adidas. influencers. Exactly. So it's the same premise, but on a broader scale. But and uh, at certain points, you you have to do reinvention. So I teach them about like that's why this um, these signature signature people athletes or entertainers are so important to to these specific brands so Travis Scott in a sense is he is he's driven so much business to Nike but then it's like you don't want to burn him out so in right. not burning him out that's where the the other layers are coming in so it's just like you know what we'll do um PlayStation with PlayStation Nike and Travis Scott we'll do uh, Mc McDonald's is one separate thing, but yep. that could now be a connection between McDonald's, Nike, and Travis Scott, and each other subsidiary that comes in. It's um, it continues to build to that mystique or that desire, but it's growing new fan bases because each one of these brands touch different people. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's so, true. Um, and in regards to like yo Travis and his influence with with sneakers is it's oh it's crazy like i've seen the fours go from like 450 to now they're like 1700 yeah the the ones are over 2k the the friends and family pff, forget about it <laughs> yeah. yeah 
<laughs> it just doesn't even make sense. But he's he's continued to like, it's almost like what Supreme does. Supreme has a collaboration with everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's the continuous reinvent, re, re, continuously reinventing your brand. Mm-hmm. Which makes it just like, yo, they got collab with Colgate. They have Supreme fucking poppy seeds. I know. Um, yeah. It's gotten really and, it, <laughs> and the shit does not grow a Supreme plant. Like, if I bought a Supreme poppy seed, I want my fucking plant to say Supreme. <laughs> you, know, you want the stem to have the SUP on it? I want it to be red roses. And it yes. says Supreme. Fresco, you're That's a genius. What I want. <laughs> That's great. I love I love how Luke is like, yo, I'm I'm listen, Fresco, you you're a genius, but you need to not be the fourth mic, all right? We're gonna do day three. I love your ideas, listen, but it's still great. the three of us. No, 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 no. It nah. could be a fourth mic, just not the third mic. That's all I'm saying. Just not the third. Um, Fresco, I did want to also ask you this, and you know, you can just talk about it as much as you want if if not. Um, they Nike did have a, a scandal that still is, you know, continuously being uncovered a little bit with uh, uh, Ann Herbert and her son and bankrolling his business. And and um, it just kind of like you said, in terms of the hype and also educating people, because a lot of the times you don't see this that type of bankrolled business growing up in, in the inner city. And, and what were your thoughts when you kind of when you saw how deep it was to the consumer and to yourself as well it's uh it's unfortunate and it speaks um directly to a problem that hasn't been addressed in several 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 years Mm -hmm. it's like uh, out of sight out of mind but because everything is so um traceable now um (laughs) It's, it's almost guaranteed to come back. But I feel, you know, of course, like being a black man, like I feel like the, the hammer may have came down heavier if it was, you know, that. Mm-hmm. But at the same mm-hmm. time, um, we as black people have to understand that, yo, when we, we put the sauce in this whole space, mm-hmm. We put the sauce in the whole space. So like the, but we're not putting, like cementing ourselves within the space. There are people that are very relevant, but on a grand scheme, it, it doesn't really match up. Mm-hmm. It might, the corporation is one dynamic, but the, what drives the corporation is a whole nother thing. Yes. But before I bear too far left, the, uh, homie with the shoes and his moms and yep. doing all that um yo i mean <laughs> you can't knock it like you, I, I can't personally <laughs> knock it like i'm not really that mad i'm like yo, like i think it's pretty smart i think you know there's things that he could have done way smarter you know oh, in order yeah, to yeah, not 100%. like the corporate card stupid be like there's just too many things that were traceable directly back to your mother Mm -hmm. and there are there are people that work within some of these uh these companies that are there as moles moles are everywhere yep (laughs) watch the fucking mole bro because they will be and if you're not cutting the mole in he's cutting you out (laughs) yes it's true I, that's some that's some real shit i mean is is it is something like that because that's more of like a um it, like when you're inside, like we are, you can kind of see those things. Is that something that you tell the kids during your social studies classes? You know, I don't even, I don't get that deep into it. I do say though, one of the things that's changed my life in everything that I do are relationships. Yeah. So Very you fair. build relationships with, um, with people with like minds. And it just so happens that I'm in a space of sneakers so like the like minds around me, you know, we can, we can not even just, it's not about like using somebody, just building organic relationships. And that puts you a, at different tables. Or like, you know, when you build an organic relationship with somebody, it puts you at a different table. And that's within the frameworks of working at a company. And that's within your personal life. So like, that's more what I tell them about versus like, you know, like you get in this space and nah, like I, 
I want them to understand the space, but I want to un- want them to understand when they're stepping into that space, they they're inviting you in. So like you still have a level of power. And if they're not inviting you in and you kick the door in, you still know what's up. Mm-hmm. So Fresco, let me ask you, you were saying how, you know, brands have been like they evolve over time. So your I guess your next evolution is this producer role. What kind of mm-hmm. brought you to production? Like what what brought you? What was the interest? Sneakers, in man. Yeah. Like I mm-hmm. um I started uh writing the idea was for me to write um write these scripts for people to do uh videos and some of them just weren't really that good like at doing it and i'm just like you know what like if i'm writing this i'm comfortable with like speaking to camera or or i guess i am so i kind of just stepped into the role and it's like it's something that i never knew i i needed because, you know, it helped me tap into a different side of like my creative mind, which made me fall into the realm of production. Because, mm. yo, prior to this, I feel like I couldn't think. Like I couldn't come up with ideas. I'm like, yo, like my mom's fucking, she's an artist. Like she's creative as fuck. Like, you know, people I know creative, creative, but that it just didn't strike me. But now it's like nonstop, like nonstop. My mind's always moving in regards to like creating something new. So I figure in the realm of production, I have relationships with um, people that do videography. I have relationships with sound people. I can put these things together. I have a a decent following. Um, I can utilize um, my power and them and we can connect and build and create. So like, that's why I'm so in the realm of production now. Yes. Fresco, how'd you get your like start in the sneakers? I mean, everyone has a, a entry to this to this love to this passion and i want to know what was yours um basketball basketball is like my um i love basketball like i can't even describe how much i love basketball so um and i i'm a michael jordan fan but i'm not a michael jordan stan so gotcha. you know okay. respectfully to the stands mm-hmm. out there um however uh yeah so like i wanted to my mom's is from London or she's from Jamaica, London. Yeah. So she's a immigrant to uh, mm-hmm. New York. So the um, like coming up, I didn't have like a crazy amount of money. My pops hustled. My pops was uh, a yard roster man. Like my pops, he, he did his thing, but uh, he wasn't always around. So like, you know, it's dependent on mom. So like if I'm playing ball and as you're just getting into ball, this is before like the sponsored teams and shit. So you got to buy shoes, but you got to buy shoes to go to school and you got to buy shoes that you could wear on the court too. So I always wanted to, and my mom did fashion design. So I always wanted to look fly. So I, uh, that drew my eye to sneakers. And then I saw like, you know, everybody sees the cultural moments. Like I feel like Dwayne Wayne, I say Dwayne Wayne because it's, um, what's the name of that show? Different world. men. Different world, yes. Different world. So seeing those moments of those guys wearing it off the court and looking like cool, that you know those basketball that it just kind of birthed that, and then yo know, sneakers they just won't leave me alone. Just they're <laughs> on my fucking back, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, for you sure ha- I hear that. Do you oh, have? Go. A, I was gonna say Fresco. I mean, obviously, when you know Chris, Luke, we all have multiple sneakers lots of sneakers uh, too many sneakers do you have maybe you know a, a top three pairs of sneakers that fresco wilson's like yo i fucking will never let go i i needed these i love them you know let, let us know what you got what you love my uh well i will say this first my number one sneaker i don't own motherfuckers outside Number one sneaker I do not own that I love, my favorite shoe ever, is the Lucky 7 Nike SB. Um, green's my favorite color. It has gold. Everything in my birth is sevens. I'm born 717. I weighed seven pounds, seven ounces on the seventh floor at 702. Yeah, like, my, my me and my sister oh, yeah. were seven years and seven days apart. Um, damn, this must be traffic. Like, I live by Target, <laughs> so, like, shit gets busy <laughs> over here. All good, um, man. But yeah, so uh, I would say my favorite three sneakers that I never get rid of. One, the LeBron 15 uh, Kith with the white floral and gold. Okay. Um, I absolutely love that shoe. And it's very obscure. People kind of look at it like and hear me say like LeBron 15 is like, yo, this shoe. And I don't even mess with anyhow. 
<laughs> I got this. Um, I got you. I, I, I hear you, Fresco. Yes. <laughs> so that one, uh, I would say the Nike SB uh, Hunter Low. Mm -hmm. That is, man, like that shoe is just earth in, in a shoe. Um, and I would say the third one, just to keep it calm, Damn, that's hard. <laughs> just whatever the first one was that you thought of, just say that. Uh, the uh, white cement Jordan Four. Mm, um, classic. That is do the right thing. That is the first shoe that I got customized. I was doing a project with a brand, uh, Orlando, twenty twelve. Um, the release, the Galaxy release, when they did the Galaxy Phone Posit, the Big Bang LeBron, KD, whatever. Um, I happened to be working at this this Jordan thing and I had them customize my uh, Jordan 4s. And I think I have a white cement. I think I maybe have like five pairs. So, Damn. yeah. You know, you, you brought up um, SBs a little bit there. So you, you love an, you're an SB lover. So you must have been sort of paying attention to this dunk craze. Damn, I got <laughs> there, there we go. <laughs> All right, because I just wore, you know, these are new ones. So, you know, do I have any pink ones? I got a pink one right there but so I just un -DS these well these are the socks that come with them but the um hey the, uh, the concept yeah, yep. awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the concept joints yo the man these joints are just fire like they're fire but I also have and I haven't worn these yet um the Habibis. Habibis. <laughs> they say um, you get a discount at the bodega if you wear those. <laughs> yo, I think, yo, as long as I discount my sandwich, I'm lit. Like, right? It's totally That's what I'm fine. saying. <laughs> but nah, these are, um, yo, I didn't realize how, like, dope these shoes were until I held them in my hand. Mm. Yeah. So, um. With so many yeah, great ones, like, that's the case, too. Yeah. And now that dunks are, like, dunks are a thing, <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, yes, again. The ones that, yo, I gave away a pair of uh, Mosquito SBs, and now those things are selling for like twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. gave that shoe away. It's insane the amount yeah. of just dunks I gave out, like in like two thousand seven to nine. You know what I mean? Like, but I wanted to ask you, you know, you sort of being on that side of things, um, you know, because it seemed to slap us in the face this dunk craze. Like, I couldn't, re I didn't know where it came from. I didn't see any of it. Like, could what? Were you early on that? Like, where do you think it co sort of started if you have like a time frame? Well, the new in the newer time frame, right? Yes. The, yeah, yeah. The round so two. The newer time frame, I would say who? No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't know what um, you're talking about. Don't know what you're talking about. So I would say that started the, the end towards the end of 2019 was uh because sb sb had been doing releases but their releases had been garnering more attention throughout 2019 so like it was a slower grind but towards the end towards the end of the year was all right like we did our thing with sb let's let's go virgil and mm. the end of 2019 was the off-white dunk yep mm -hmm. and that one was a strong segue into 2020, which was right after Travis Scott. Yeah. Yeah. And then so it's like it was like February sorry. was Strange Love, I think, and the yes. Travis. Okay. Okay. Strange Love, Travis. Uh, and then follow the follow ups to those were the uh, Reverse 420, Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. Um, uh, the Strawberry Cop. There, there's a lot of uh, weed references in these Nike <laughs> shoes, uh, yeah. SBs. Um, but yeah, but then the it drove all of the other SB uh, stories because now it's like, you know, the stories are cool, but we're really into this SB dunk craze and it's pushing the SB and non SB because they revisited the um, be true to your school again. Right. They did yeah. it with Virgil and then they un Virgiled it. <laughs> it's like a test run. Yes, <laughs> they did. They did a hype test run, which was weird. It's usually the reverse. Nah, and it, it worked. It worked, and it's mainly. Uh, I'm more of a dunk high guy. I do like lows, my but guy. um, lows are my guy. <laughs> I'm, yeah. a, I'm a dunk high guy, like for sure. I know that pig box is definitely a high. <laughs> um, you know what? Let's see what this is. 
Oh, it's killing him. It's killing him. He doesn't even know. <laughs> oh, this is old. Oh, speaking Ooh. of... <laughs> speaking of truths, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, UNLV. Shouts out to um Larry Johnson, but I hate the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you can say Stacey Augman, you can say Greg Anthony, you can say, you know. You're right, got, you're right. But got, Greg Anthony, Nick, Stacey Nick's. Augman, Atlanta. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a few. There was a few, but nah, 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 nah. We we, we keeping that home, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, we always talk about the, the dunk craze and, you know, and, and how, like you said, Fresco, that era, that, you know, 2019, when I started seeing things increase. But once again, a lot of times we can put it back to, you know, one a rapper who, you know, kind of pushed that, you know, he took older models and then people started becoming enamored with the older models. And Travis. yeah, yep. Yep. Travis set himself up. He, he was where he wore them on the Internet. Actually, one of the pairs and I'm mad I don't have it here because I let somebody photograph it. I just got a pair of the Quasimodo uh, okay. Dunk Highs. Um, so he's been wearing all of these various dunks. I've seen him walk into certain stores and pick up a few older SBs, but this was happening for like, this wasn't 2019, this was like a buildup. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if he just was like, yo, this is the year I'm gonna kick these all out. But there was, you know, you put them on him. You put them on what was his girlfriend's name? I don't follow these girls. That family. Oh, uh, Kylie. One Kylie of the Jenners. Jenner. Yep, Kylie Jenner. Yes, Jenner. <laughs> Kylie, Kylie, Kylie. So, uh, yeah, you put them on her. You put them on him. You, you, you. All, the eyes are the eyes are glaring. And mm -hmm. then you know, shouts out to my man who brought SBs back, according to him, Wale. <laughs> 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 um, nah, like I actually really respect Wale's sneaker game. So like I'm just oh, of course shit. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like his music, but, very uh, underrated. He 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 can put words together well. Yes, mm -hmm. he just interacts with the audience differently. Maybe it's a DC thing, you know, Kevin Durant with the troll account. <laughs> like, you, know, like, you might yeah. be onto something with that one. Maybe a PG County DC thing, but yo, shouts out to PG County and DC. Please keep me safe when I'm down there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, you put them on different people. Now it's all like uh, Instagram. You get these shots, you get these, these moments of your favorite person in said shoe. And whether they really fuck with it or they're just into it for the moment, it can grab uh, a consumer to to any part of that that shoe, whether it's a be true to your school, whether it's a regular black and white dunk, whether it's a whatever. Now the eyes are just on them, no matter what they yeah. are. That's true. I find I find it uh, it's. I find it's a bubble, but I don't know how long this can be sustained because we're and Luke is always Luke always talks about this. Like we're jumping out the gym from from the gate with four figure prices or close to it for SBs. And it's like that's a little like, you know, like the Habibis. I mean, even though they started out maybe five, six hundred, they're a thousand dollar shoe. I mean, the the chunky donkeys, eighteen hundred. It's like how long and how sustainable is this? However long the people allow it to happen. Yeah. The people control the market. If you put a shoe at a certain price and no one buys it, it has to go down. That's true. And yeah. if it doesn't, and it, but there's, I, I say shoes are very much so wearable art, but it, you know, like once you wear them, in a sense, it depreciates to another consumer. But for me, it appreciates because... Um, that tells my story when I wear mm -hmm. these shoes. Yep. So like for me, there's a higher level of appreciation when I wear my shoes, but mm -hmm. it's also uh, arbitrary value. So like whatever value you place on it is what is, is, is what mean, what's meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. So I know the, the dunk bubble has burst before it was, you know, a, a minute ago, yo dunks were like, they, they were heavy mm -hmm. and then, you know, it kind of burned itself out. But, um, Right now, I think it's going to last a bit because of one, the, the brands recognize that it's a, it's an insta time that we're in. So they're constantly feeding, they're, they're feeding the need of what the consumer is gravitating towards. And it's just like, 
if the same influential people keep the, doing the same things, it'll probably continuously be, you know, a, a similar effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't knock anybody. Like, I think, like, yo, if you want a shoe, it's it's not the it's the people really control the market, yo. Like, they really do. So, um, if they, you know, like, it's up to them. So that's that's how long this is gonna. It's up to the people. All right, guys, I'm quitting the podcast. Fresco's a better. <laughs> third, third. <laughs> He literally said everything I've said, but just way more a lot more eloquently. Yes. Right. I, I, My whole thing is like just up the quantities by becoming <laughs> the VP of Nike myself, you know, <laughs> but you just said it way better. Just let the people figure it out. You know, I mean, it's, like, yo, be, oh, no, please. First, go, go. No, it, because it's like, yo, like the brands. Yeah, they can they can a lot more product for sure. Um, but it's still that's where the desire lives mm -hmm. yo Absolutely. the sneakers app is like yo check on your friends that have the sneakers app because <laughs> yo they may have mental health issues like you you know like <laughs> yes, they do the there are some people that i know that and and i don't know how true this is but there's some people that i know that win a little bit more consistently and then there's some do you that anybody have a friend that wins a little bit more consistently on the yep. sneakers app versus yep. somebody else we have uh -huh. a listener. His name's Alex. He wins every fucking uh, every raffle, bro. Every every, every sneaker. Raffle. Yeah, listen, everything. this is what I'm saying. So I feel like, and someone referenced this to me the other day. So let me not say I feel like, but I agree with in a sense that there may be a winner's pool and a loser's pool. I also believe that. Yeah. yeah. So like, depending on where you're swimming at, <laughs> is your experience <laughs> on the sneakers app. So like, but people people are so consistently. Um, Yo, the most post thing I think besides food on my timeline is got him or you, your, your entry was not. It was not selected. <laughs> yep. Yo, and that is like that brings you that really dictates your day for some people. It does. So like this can really like fuck with somebody like, yo, damn, I lost again. Damn, I lost again. Damn, I lost again. So it's like well, Fresco here. Let me ask you about this, too, just because we've sort of alluded to it a couple of times like Luke one week. He had five W's. You know what I mean? Five W's, though, is not necessarily the amount of W's that you want because you you want the shoe, but you have to try every time now in order to. So like maybe is there is there something to like this gambling? Have you had any discussions with somebody on like because you have to go for it every time. So what if you're in these winners pools and you hit every time now you got no money. But these sneakers are coming. Well, I mean, that that is where you have to cut the fat. Ah, so mm. um, in cutting the fat, like you take the shots that you want to take. And if you're going to take another shot and you hit that shot, that you have to pass that shot. Mm. You have to make that shot now and assist. Yeah. So like assist, meaning you have to sell it. Right. Mm. So like pass that off and somebody else will score. Yep. Yep. So I, I you in that, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, um, in, in that sense, I would say like there's, you you really have to make those decisions because like you can, you can shoot for everything. You guys, y'all know J.R. Smith. Mm -hmm. He's getting That's true. That yep. joint is going up. But you can, you can also, you know, you got to learn how to facilitate. I just reference everything to basketball. But. No, it, you're doing, it, it's, it's it's working. It's going great. Um, so it's just it's just interesting though, because the more I think about it, the more like the reselling uh, community is sort of being forced upon itself by you have to take every shot and you take some shots that you don't you you hit some shots you don't want to take, right? So basically, what I'm trying to get at is you on the inside, like like you know where where do you see this like kind of stopping in general? Like, I know reselling is going to be around for a while, but like reselling as a bubble, aside from a dunk bubble, is also kind of so big to the point where it might burst. But you know what, though? Realistically, the the term reselling is a, is a few years old. But um, shoes have been resold for several years now. It's yep. a constant thing. Like, it's you know, there's always going to be, people are born every day. There's always going to be some new connection. A lot of these people, they didn't, they don't know shit about Michael Jordan, but 
but they love his shoes. And then the last dance enhanced that love yep. even more. So then you'll have those, you know, there's always something new. There's always a way to, to switch it or grab a different audience. Like I'd have never thought there'd be a 7-Eleven Nike SB. Like I would never in a million years think that that would happen, but it happened. So the people that may be just into 7-Eleven, yo, we need that shoe at whatever <laughs> value it costs. I There may be somebody out there that feels that way. Ben and Jerry, I am absolutely positively sure there's somebody yeah. that feels mm -hmm. that way. It's like, yo, you know what? I love this brand so much that even though I may not mess with Nike, this speaks directly to Ben and Jerry. Yo, got it. Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead for sure. Grateful yeah. Dead is like, yeah. yo, like I did an unboxing video on those, which taught me like a lot about that shoe. But they are, I think, based out of California. Um, nobody listens to them. Facts. Nobody listens to the Grateful Dead. Well, in this, let me say, let, um, yeah. so you know what? My apologies. People, several people <laughs> listen to the Grateful Dead. I was going to say, yes. The consumers of that particular shoe, a lot of the consumers right. have never, never. Yeah. listened yes. to that. You almost but had a Chris made, Tinker moment. <laughs> yes, I may. I almost. Thank you, guys. You were gonna have fans of Grateful Dead throwing grill, grilled cheeses at you, man. <laughs> They're vicious people. My bad, my bad, guys. Um, <laughs> no, you're doing great, man. Yeah, I yo, I just, I just see it. I don't see it. Um, I don't see it ending anytime soon. Uh, the the desire to have sneakers is just growing daily because now it's a uh, it's also status mm -hmm. it's um it's a it's a great way to make connections yes yo you look down at somebody's feet you're like yo or he like i like if someone has the same shoes on i'm like hey nice shoes and they'll look down like <laughs> right it's like hey <laughs> we're talking now <laughs> so it's like yo there's this yo sneakers are just like they're the soul they're the soul they are like the base they're the yeah, they're everything. I think um, that might be a good time to um, let you go, Fresco. Uh, if there's any last moments or any, any, anything you want to say before you take out, I don't want to take much more of your time. Or if, um, guys, if any last thoughts for Fresco before we get him out of here. My my last question is, Fresco, tell the listeners what size you are so that if you <laughs> do find a lucky sevens for you, they know where, where to reach you. I am a size 12. Do you I think listeners true help them size out? Size 12. Um, please let them be authentic because <laughs> I can authenticate shoes. You are not gonna get me. You are not. <laughs> Just know that. Like when I say I'm ready for the sneaker smoke, <laughs> with all the smoke. I love it, yes. man. So um, yeah, I uh yo, Grammys tomorrow. I hope my brother Freddie Gibbs wins the album of the the rap album of the year. Yeah. I'm I'm totally jacking that, and outside of that, I would say, um, yo, the I like I said I can't get away from sneakers. It's something that has opened up several doors in my life in several spaces, and um, you know, even though I am who I am and I stand on who I am without the shoe. The shoe has helped me walk through several doors and sit at several tables. So, yeah. Um, in regards to social studies, you can follow at social study on Instagram. S-O-L-E-C-I-A-L-S-T-U-D-Y at social study. And I think that's on Twitter also. And if you are trying to find me and you cannot find at social study, you can follow me at Fresco BK, that is F-R-E-S-C-O-B-K, not for Burger King, but for Brooklyn, because that's where I'm from. Awesome, I, man. I, I just want to say one last thing. And um, it's all, I'm, I'm really, like I said, I'm, I'm really happy, Fresco, that you're able to do it. It's also really good to see um, a young guy such as yourself in this space. Uh, you know, especially being from Brooklyn, I'm from I'm from Brooklyn as well. So I'm always excited to see that what part? Uh, I grew up in uh, Crown Heights. I lived in Brownsville. I lived in all different parts of Brooklyn, man. Prospect Heights. So I, you know, I'm Yo, got to watch out for Lawrence. If he's <laughs> that, that, that was my my teenage years with my grandfather. But 
you know, I, like I said, I'm just I'm really happy to see that. And from, you know, from the moment, I, you know, we met you almost, you know, two and a half, three years ago. And it's like, like I said, to watch your, your growth. And I, I fucking love it. And um, and yeah, I'm saying a lot of nice things because we wear size 12 and I do want <laughs> uh, a nice family discount. Yeah, of course I do. Why? I mean, but at the same time, I genuinely feel that way. And like, like I said, to watch your growth. You know, I'm, I look, I see, and I'm, I'm really happy for you, bro. And I'm, I'm really happy you were able to come on this podcast with us, for real. I am thankful that I got the chance to to be on set with you guys and mm-hmm. not just here, but, you know, initially and mm-hmm. and have that human interaction and understand that, like, yo, like our connection for the most part starts with sneakers. Mm-hmm. So it's go. like uh, it's. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thankful that, that you guys had me and like that I hope I'm doing something good. I want it to be relative in regards to social studies. I want like I want all the kids, but like the black and brown kids, a lot of them, they really, really drive this business. They really, yes. really, 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 really drive the business. And I want them to see someone that looks like them and that is from where they are from and has every struggle and experience, everything that they've experienced living in a a low income neighborhood mm-hmm. or you know whatever I, I like i am you and you are me so like that's why i teach the program to to the, to kids or to people because i am you like we have this common interest but we can both grow from this common interest yeah man it's fucking awesome cool. man i will say luke your job is in jeopardy i i'm nervous <laughs> i got to be honest with you i'm really nervous Fresco was such a good guest, which is like, you know, if you're going to lose your job to somebody, you want to lose your job to somebody good. So <laughs> I don't know, man, I'm sweating here and it's not just the beanie. <laughs> I also want to only speak in basketball analogies now. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah, I love all that stuff that he's doing with social studies, too. Love that. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and Lawrence is the same size as him, which very opportune. Yeah, it's a great time to see if I can get some of those uh, sneakers off of Fresco's uh, wall because I will <laughs> gladly take some of those. So. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I saw he's got some pink boxes. We know that he's got some pink boxes. He's got some pink boxes, and uh, and I love pink box era SB. So let's make it happen, Fresco. So first off, let's kind of let's talk about what everybody's talking about, right? We posted it on the social media. We got to talk about it, right? The Travis mm-hmm. Scott fragment ones, you know. Yeah, I mean, okay, so oh, you like guys to sound so excited about it. Jesus Christ. I mean, like I said earlier, um, you know, before the interview, I. This is good and bad. OK, I think what this is, is really the culmination of everything they can do to keep the hype as high as it is, which could be viewed as sort of like a desperation move, which I'm not saying this is. I think this is more of just a layup of popular collaborative effort that they could do within the office, right? Mm -hmm. Nike having Travis and um, Fragment Design imprint sort of being available to them. Like, why would you not do this? But Mm -hmm. to me, um, it's it's sort of getting a little stagnant, whereas Mm -hmm. like this was so obvious and, and, and so not elevated beyond just adding the two logos to it. I feel it sort of like hurts this in the long run like this was a short burst like easy money grab but like there's no storytelling which you know through the past couple episodes we've realized how important that is Mm -hmm. there's there's no real like like what did they do they inverted the the royal like all right fine like okay cool but other than that it's just two like logos yeah but it's blue (laughs) it's blue it's a nice blue it's a nice blue the imprint is similar like it's the fragment imprint with the with the with this with the smiley face feel on it. It's nice. I like that. I like that little hit. Um, um, I mean, going to be Lawrence, reselling for lots of money. Yeah. Like Lawrence. I mean, this is sort of like our two schools of thought coming together. So this should be like our favorite shoe together. But I mean, like, what do you think? You know, I, like I said, when I first saw it, I was not the biggest fan i think the the color blocking the the blocking of the the royal it, it makes the shoe feel weird because we're used to a certain uh like a, a certain like a royal toe or a black toe um it also shows that uh nike is now saying all right we can take one of our hot designers and 
put them with another influencer or another designer. And now, like you said, we can have these these collab shoes. So now it's only a matter of time before there's a Virgil and, you know, and Travis shoe or a Virgil and Hiroshi shoe. And well, do, you prom- do you promise, though? I mean, <laughs> it's only it's only a matter of time now. Yeah. And, like, and, no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and what we're going to see now is these, yeah, people are already proclaiming these the shoe of the year um, because obviously it's a Travis Scott and it's not in the typical brown colorway, but it also has the allure of the royal, uh, the, what is it, the the royal toe or whatever you wanted, the, what Hiroshi did. So I think we're, these are just going to be, the hype is going to be fucking probably at like Hulk Hogan 1980. 485 levels you know what i'm saying where he's just you know these people are just gonna be ripping off shirts and singing i am an american hero for these shit so i'm good um i mean is it also weird to me is that toe look a little off yo go to the side image luke yeah i got you which hold on the other side right yeah the other side because that that side actually looks okay to me yeah that toe looks a oh, little no. off oh yeah, yeah yeah i did i definitely saw that in some oh this like how it's kind of flattening or whatever yeah, I don't know. There's just something off with me. I don't know. And I'm not. This is a sample. Like, who knows what this actually is? It's like the unofficial official mm-hmm. teaser images, like whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like just looking at some of these angles, like I can't like is the soul supposed to be off white like that? Like, I can't. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of questions. Oh, I it's have. like supposed to be like that cream color. You mean? Yeah. Which, it, which if it is, that's cool. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. mind it. I'm just trying to look at it going like, where are we in production here? Because I can't tell if I'm supposed to be taking this seriously or not. I mean, well, I'm taking it seriously, guys. All right. <laughs> I'm a little upset that you guys aren't taking it seriously. You guys were arguing about this last week. Fresco brought up great points about this on the show about like trying to preserve the hype of both brands without running them dry. And but you, yeah, that's where I'm kind of saying, like, you know, the, the obvious layup the thing, the obvious layup with no real storytelling like like it. All right. So I'll be able to backtrack on this if there's some sort of like situation where like Fujiwara interviews Travis and they have a conversation, you know what I mean? Cause like mm-hmm. those things are the things that can keep something like this going. But right now it just seems like they're slapping shit together and going here, you fucking twits. Like you fucking, here's the shoe you want, but not really. Mm-hmm. I I am interested to see. There's also uh they're supposed to be pink inside of the shoe. So just like the, the Travis uh, one it has, yep. it has his, uh, it has a pink liner inside of it. If I'm correct. The once again, I, I just I'm I'm indifferent on the shoe because I feel like obviously it's going to be if it's going to be so hard to obtain in this era. If this was 2014, 2013, I'd be like, all right, we got a shot. But in this era of 2021, seeing how people they're fucking if they're trying to kill each other over a hundred dollar profit for a shoe, what's going to happen with these? So. Unless, like I said, and then when you start looking at ones, like you have the, we had the Marcus Jordan scandal with the fucking, what was it? The uh, trophy rooms trophy yeah. rooms, and like when you start seeing ones like this, you start wondering, all right, what, how is it going through the back door? How are we, you know, like what's going to happen? So I don't know. I'm not international back door this time. Oh, yeah. In, in other, um, you know, Jordan news. Uh, that, that's something that won't get backdoored. And we know because of a recent experience, Union did just confirm that they're going to have another Jordan release this year. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if anyone's done it right, as far as releasing, it has been Union. Chris Gibbs has done a great job of sort of maintaining uh, something that's fair and consistent as far as people purchasing. Um, but here's the thing is he's sort of gotten already to touch the go to's at the moment. You know, he's gotten a one, mm-hmm. two ones. And then he's gotten two fours and he's touched some other Jordans. But like, if it's going to be a Jordan that we all love, I mean, what are we thinking? A three? No, it's going to be a nine, bro. No, get out of here. Shut up. You stink. <laughs> um, I could see him doing. Uh, I could see him doing a six or a seven. Honestly. So here, you know, I've I've touched upon it before, and I think a, why a lot of people respect that those fours that he did so much is because he had to follow Virgil and he still held his own. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to allow that to happen again. Um, We have too many fives. Mm -hmm. So that kind of takes me off. Um, There's rumors of a two coming in the 20. Mm -hmm. So I don't see that going. 
My only thing is like, if there's a three happening too, I don't think he's going to be down to follow Virgil on that. So like, I mean, he's really compete. Like it might be a weird one. I'm saying that's why I'm saying a seven. I think like a seven seems like a realistic as far as like the design of a seven has enough, like, like kind of weird, like corners and whatnot that he could play with, with like this, the stitching play that he's been having for the past two, you know, I would like to see what he would do. Uh, with that seven silhouette, because I think there's so much interesting uh, little nooks and crannies for him to put details into. Yeah, I I would love uh, a union too. I I I feel as if the designers and when Jordan Brand has a collab, the twos are universally like underrepresented. Yeah, I'm I I truly believe that. Um, I I can understand a seven. I also would hope maybe for a Union Five. Mm. Um, they've done collabs in the past, and I'm a big fan of the Union One Eighties, uh, which I, I, I have behind me, and they were able to do wonderful things with the high tongue. So I would definitely love to see possibly a Jordan Five being in the collab. All fair. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm going to keep my heads on that because he's two for two, man. I mean, some people don't have that those fours like up there as like, you know, a well done four. But I think they're wrong. I think they're haters. And I think that he, you know, that's that shop has been doing what they needed to. Also, 30 years, I think they've been open now. I think they just cel started celebrating their 30th anniversary. So, yeah, I yeah. believe so as well. Can I get yeah. an update on your on your guava fours? Have you done that thing that people have been doing where they cut the little hole out of the side of the, the plastic? They're doing what? You know the uh, what's the what's the name of that plastic tip? You know the thing that uh. Oh, that my original critique of him. I'm like, why yeah. is that? Yeah, no, I'm not touching them. The only thing I'm doing is what I was supposed to, and it was cut the tongue. Okay. Oh, you All did right. you, you did cut the tongue? Yeah, I did cut the tongue. I actually, you know what? I broke them out the other day for the first time. Like the nice weather kind of made me want to, you know, actually have some necks to break. You know what I mean? And um, those shoes held up, man. They're still comfy like that. I put them on. I had the same energy as when I first got them. You know what I mean? Like, that's a great fucking shoe. Listen, I don't want to brag, but my Zoom 92s are great. All right. <laughs> I know I, I really do love them. Like, in all, all seriousness, they are so good. They're just like a nice, clean, pinkish color. I love it. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, no problem, man. Anytime. Um, you know, speaking of, of like a nice pink color, too, uh, we got Air Max Day coming out. The Bacons are uh, one of the pro more prominent ones that we spoke about last week. Um, and, you know, in very sub FM fashion, I guess we were a little early. I threw it out there. I was like, where's the Air Max shit? And finally we got it. Mm -hmm. um, we do have another um, 326 pair that highlights a bunch of the ones that we've all revered in the past. I don't know if you guys have gotten to check them out or whatever. They have the Mitch match a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but it's enough where I'm kind of like, I don't know. Are the these inside swooshes are different. Are these yeah. the ones you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't sure about it, but yeah, this is a very interesting shoe. What do you think as like a designer? Well, so, you know, it's been obvious that storytelling is, you know, if you've listened to the past couple of episodes, storytelling is such an important part of this. It's more about the experience than it is the product. All the, like the draw, the product is what drives the experience. Um, so to me, this is telling a great story. I mean, just even looking at the different constructions on each side, like the references they're pulling um, from each shoe that is on the insole, right? Like those are all cool. But to me, a little unwearable just because of the mismatch. That's just me. I'm not like that mismatch guy. But I mean, the story of them is great. It's a commemorative shoe based on a holiday for the shoe. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. not only is this highlighting what a, the shoe actually is, but it has like the references on the inside. Like, no, very, very good. Very good. I mean, the evolution of icons is what I believe is called. Um, and I think it does a good job showing that. I, to me, it's just not a wearable on my end. How do you feel about it, Lawrence? I, I just don't like the way it, it looks. And I'm not a big uh, white sneaker fan. Mm -hmm. So I think I can I can comfortably say I will pass on those. Yeah, it was. I, I agree. I like the I, I agree with both of you. I wouldn't wear these, but I like the I like the attempt. I like the attempt a lot. It was uh, it's it's more of an art piece than it is a, a wearable shoe in my opinion mm -hmm. i think we're all on the same page about that one yeah uh last uh, i i wanted to get a opinion on this too because we've we've kind of been ignoring it for the past couple of weeks we keep for like you know warren lotus is just back in the news is all i can say uh warren lotus tried to get 
a bunch of his social media followers to uh, like submit entries to uh, walk 5,000 miles from San Francisco to LA. And they found a guy and he's been walking for the past two weeks, still walking. It's going to be like another week. Till I can't believe this is like actually I happening. Can't. I know. It's like it's shock jock shit, right? It's like shit that I used to see when I was when I was interning, like dumb, cra- like crazy people like doing all this stuff. Yeah. But like, where is this kid's parents? He does. Is- did you see the guy? No, he doesn't no. look like he has a family, <laughs> which look, if that's the case, like, you know, I hope this I hope this man um, the best, uh, but he needs uh, he needs Jesus or somebody. He needs some help to figure out where his goals are aligned, because that shoe is not. Do you understand the amount of work it takes? All right, here, let me break this down. Hourly, right? If I'm going to do something, if I want to buy something, I look at how many hours it's going to take me to work to get it. Mm-hmm. OK, because I have a dollar amount attached there when I work. This guy, I don't think he understands how much his time is worth. <laughs> We're saying he's been walking for two weeks. Yeah, he got like, so he gave him, so Warren Lewis was offering him like $5,000 and a pair of the Reapers. That was like what was going on with that. And then, uh, you know, the guy took the $5,000 and then Warren Lotus was like, oh, because you were going to give a thousand to your friend, I'm going to give you an extra five thousand for him. But with the, the fact still remains, you're getting paid five thousand dollars for three weeks of work, which is, that, you know. Yeah, it's OK, but you're also, you know, you're you're walking. It sucks. Now, you know? so, like, is he camping? How does he eat and use the bathroom? So apparently so during this guy, COVID. <laughs> This guy's <laughs> apparently. Hold on, let me see if I can find some video. Yo, my, yo, my man walking down a highway with a double mask on and Reapers. <laughs> Bro, he's a psycho. Oh my god, I hate Instagram. I'm trying to log in here and it's not letting me. Um, but what was I saying? The, yeah, it's a psycho. It's like a crazy kid who's uh who's like walking in and he's uh he's walking in these shoes. And he's apparently sleeping on like the floor and at the beach. And and like Warren Lotus was like, I'll give you a place to stay like in an RV. And he was like, no, nah, I want to stay out in the wilderness. Like they were they're fucking crazy, dude. That sounds crazy. Come I mean, on. is this so dumb it's sick or is it just so dumb that it's even the dumbest thing possible? I mean, it, does it, it does it breach the threshold of sickness? Yeah. So five thousand dollars. Hot meals, hotels, and foot massages. That's what he was offering. And then a bunch of people were starting to do this thing where they were like, Oh, I love you so much, Warren Lords. I'm gonna suck you off and say I'll, I'll only do it for forty five hundred. Oh, I'm only gonna do it for no breaks, like crazy shit, where it's like, No, you're not. You're not gonna do that. And then they landed on somebody. Where is this kid? Where's the last kid? Oh, this guy. This is the guy that they got to do it. Oh, Rufat's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Rufat Agayev. <laughs> That's a reference for all of you comedy. Come fans so, I was going to say, Chris, with the with the comedy people reference. Yeah. Rufat is a stand up comedian in New York City who is very funny. You should check him out. And since we have uh, we have said who he is, we should put his social media out there just in case. <laughs> and I will do that for the listeners, because some of the listeners are like, who the fuck is Rufat? Rufat Camp. Yeah, Rufat Camp. Are you tells you everything you want to know about him? That's already hilarious. Are you F A T Camp C A M P? Follow Rufat Camp. So yeah, he's like walking around in them. They're testing them. This was like a that was like one day in them, and it's just like it's just to show like the wear and tear of the shoe, but crazy, craziness. Um, can we hey, do something hey, like that? Well, yeah. Can what we do you want to do? Walk? No, no, no. Not us walking. We get one of the listeners to walk. For what? Into where? Yeah. What are we trying to accomplish here? Okay, hold on. Well, we got we got merch coming out at some point, right? We'll have yeah. somebody walk around in the merch all of New York City for a day or two. A, or a picture in every borough. A picture in every borough. We could do that. Or I'm not rubbing. Somebody- what happened? I'm sorry. I'm not rubbing no one's feet. All right. right. Just giving you the heads up. So don't, don't even think. <laughs> no, I'm none of us shit. are touching anybody's feet. We're not touching right. your feet at all. All right. It's especially not me. I'm not living up to those stereotypes. Um, <laughs> we make them walk around the city. Uh, if they climb an antenna. So like for a radio <laughs> no, tower. Stop, no, stop, stop, do- stop. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. 
we'll think of something we could get but if we could get the listeners to do something for us i, I want to take advantage of that all right let's 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 yeah let's figure that out let's <laughs> talk about let's talk about some shit that's like kind of still grinding i think everyone's gears man and it's the fucking taking more losses this week in sneakers and wondering if fucking ann herbert's son is still plugged in to the sneakers app because mm-hmm. we've taken some losses we've taken some losses this week yeah i mean we've been losing for two and a half years realistically <laughs> i mean based on what we're seeing here i mean i mean i'm sure you guys read the statement of him saying like like you know the nike uh infrastructure is going to change and they're going to fight bots and they've been trying i mean how much of this do you believe and how much do you think this is just pr um i think it's a little hot right now so i think they do have to kind of say yeah we're going to uh you know they have to kind of make some change because i I don't think they can continue as status quo if that makes sense you understand what i'm saying yeah they can't you can't like especially like the fact that this story has been outed it's been reported by so many outlets that there needs to be some type of change i think uh i think we're starting yeah I, i agree i think there's going to be some change i think that um, we're already starting to see it. I, I don't know if you noticed this, but we've had way more quick draws. We've had more draws than uh, anything else in the past like couple weeks. When it comes to dunks, they're pretty much all draws at this point, which you know it gives it gives you ten minutes, gives the company ten minutes to screen the the submissions. So it, yeah. you know, if you think about it like that way, there's are already starting to we're already starting to see rumblings of changes. Well, I mean, here, here's the thing, just to kind of bounce off what maybe Fresco was implying and what you're sort of saying, screening the entries, mm-hmm. you know, some people might be in a winner's pool, some I know might I be am. in this loser's pool, I'm in the loser's pool, yet <laughs> somehow you're getting that, bro, I've, I've not hit one fucking shoe that I've actually wanted on that shit. Uh, Luke, I wanted to ask you, because you're saying like a draw, do you think a draw is better? Because I think a draw is worse. Why do you think a draw is worse? I think a draw is better. I think with the Leo system to let everyone enter, or let let everyone in, mm-hmm. uh, let everyone order it or whatever the Leo system. Right. It it's a quick. It, they're all still draws. Right. But the Leo system is a a maybe a two to three minute, you know, draw, and you right. try to get your entry. And whereas the, the the ten minute draw is is it's ten minutes of you know, you're allowing so many people to get an entry in. Mm -hmm. And I think a shorter kill is a better than a longer kill. Cause I mean, I can tell you, I've probably won maybe one draw, Mm -hmm. but I've won a few Leo, you know, I've won way more Leos than I've won draws. But there was also more Leos than there were draws. Can we just agree this is the reality is it's a cancer system. (laughs) Oh, you're doing a horoscope joke. Yeah, I got it. Oh, <laughs> I got one in. I got you chose the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What would you have said? Aries, anything, literally anything but cancer. Anything but cancer. Cancer was the layup. Cancer was see now I'm making basketball references like Fresco. What? Oh, uh. oh, full circle. No, I just the only reason I think draws <laughs> honestly, draws seem like they're logically the, the better answer because you'll have it like you're screening. So 10 minutes of screening, right? If if you only have two to three minutes and you imagine that all of these bots are trying to get in, at least people have a chance to get in by that five minute mark, because all of the bots that people were going to use to get those shoes anyway mm-hmm. are already set up. So if you're thinking like, let's just say let's put like numbers to it, like, you know, arbitrary numbers, we'll do like we'll just say 100,000 people uh, have bots that are like that's 100,000 accounts or whatever. And then, you know, you have like uh, another like 25,000 accounts that are just regular people. If the if the all the bots are coming in all at the same time in those first couple minutes, how how many of us are actually truly getting through on a, on a Leo system? You know, I think so that's I, why I think like a, like that longer draw gives more people a chance to get in. And because there's more people getting in, it's going to like, it, you know, it it, it, uh, it gives the, like, maybe the AI a chance to like legitimize different accounts and all this other stuff because it sees a trend in like the, the user type. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I'm thinking. But that's just like, you know, me throwing Asian Asian words around, you know, computer science. Mm-hmm. 
but I don't know. Um, I mean, either way, I only get a W when that shit is handed to me. So that fucking uh, whatever system it is to me, it's not working. It's fair. Yeah. It's not working I mean, for any of us. No, I mean, I mean, there there is going to have to be some obvious change in the future. I just hope that it really just comes down to uh, intent. Like we've been getting abused and neglected you know, for, for so long. It's like it's comical at this point. Just like help us get the shoes we want. Make a couple more thousand. It's really not that difficult. In the end, you're still profiting. Like mm-hmm. even if like. All right. So what, what do you guys think the average quantity of a shoe is? General release dunk, say. Uh, Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even if whatever if that number is high or low, it doesn't even matter. Say if they made that thirty thousand, that's really not a loss. That's only a win. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's it lowers resale by a little bit and does all. Yeah, it's stuff, it's yeah. like not even like you're not even gonna take a hit. You barely notice it. Like in two months when it's down at like maybe uh, sixty five dollars from the resale price, it's like what is that really doing? Who's that losing for? It's only you're still gonna sell out the shoe. It's still gonna resale and so whatever. Uh, business it, that is based in around reselling it's not like they're going to lose that much money because there's going to be more opportunity for them to get the shoe in general anyway true mm-hmm. but what Farrell said a couple weeks ago was like made me think about that too is like to be fair i got to play the other side is that she, no of course she was saying that um you know the shoe like costs you know certain amount of dollars there's hidden fees everywhere so by mm-hmm. throwing another five thousand <clears> onto the product maybe they're not going to be able to meet that margin for that hundred dollar shoe or a hundred ten dollar shoe now, you know. Yeah, no, I hear, I hear you. Thing, where he's like, you know, dunks are now one hundred ten dollars for lows. When did that happen? <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, uh, my my knowledge of uh, production line. If you're doing that much quantity, I I it, don't it makes like a pennies of a difference. I'm sure. It's like it's so minute. That's why I'm kind of on the side. Like, yo, just like help us get the sneakers, guys. Like, it's not that difficult. Hmm. 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 But, you know, the, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I don't know if you guys got anything else, but I think this was a great episode. Fresco was great a great episode. guest. You know, where um, can they find you guys? The listeners, where can they find you? I mean, first off, make sure you're on the discord and mm-hmm. following our Instagram account at sub podcast NYC. Um, you know, I, you can find me at not that Cheney, um, C-H-E-N-E-Y. Uh, Luke, where are you at? At Trevisus. T R O V E E Z U S. Am I am I paused? No. Nope. And then oh. you can find me at LZD. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all good. You can find me at LZD325. That's great, man. So guys, follow us. Um, and make sure to follow the guest Fresco. Make sure you check out his um social studies program, especially if you're a younger listener that wants to learn more about sneakers. He's a great fucking resource. The past couple people we've on are great fucking resources. I hope you're getting the mm-hmm. mix of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to provide great fucking resources, and all three of the past guests that we have are. And mm-hmm. um, you know, just hang out with us on Discord. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See you Peace. next week. Peace.